What happens when the sanctity of life and the health and the well-being of mothers and their babies becomes politicized? Well, our next group of speakers will address the political impact of abortion in the courts and in medicine and in science. Uh, first, we're going to hear from attorney Alan Parker. He is president of the Justice Foundation, providing free representation to the women and men of Operation Outcry, a project you've heard from some of the women today that mobilizes women and men who share their true stories as legal witnesses of the devastating effects of abortion. Mr. Parker was lead counsel for Norma McCorvey, formerly Roe of Roe v. Wade, and Sandra Kano, the Doe of Doe v. Bolton, uh, and, uh, excuse me, in their efforts to overturn the two landmark cases that brought legalized abortion on a de demand to America. Mr. Parker has a former, was a former professor of law at St. Mary's University in San Antonio, where he taught education law and civil procedure. He also taught international human rights at the St. Mary's Institute on World Legal Problems in Innsbruck, Austria. Austria. We uh, want to thank the Justice Foundation for bringing all of us together today to share this truth with you. So let's thank him as I bring uh, him to the podium. The topic of my theme is 40 years of abortion has corrosively politicized the United States Supreme Court and the Supreme Court should correct its own error and reverse Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton. I do have respect for the institution of the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court does not always get some of the most important questions right. The first time they made a very egregious error has already been referred to once today as to who is a human being and who is entitled to legal protection under the law was in Dred Scott. That was the decision in which the Supreme Court of the United States interpreting the Constitution said that it was morally proper to treat slaves or African Americans as slaves and as property. And that was a horribly wrong decision that all, would, all of us would agree today was wrongly decided. It took a civil war and the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments to overturn that decision. And many people think if the court had not gotten it wrong, there might have been compromise or a peaceful solution to ending slavery as there was in the British Empire. But the Supreme Court said, we're going to make the decision and take it away from the American people. So, <clears throat> Roe Ro v. Wade <clears throat> and Doe v. Bolton are just as bad. They said to a group of human beings, you're not a human being, you're property, we can do whatever we want, or in this case, the delegated decision to the mother to do whatever she wants with the child in the womb. And these are egregious mistakes by the Supreme Court, which the Supreme Court should correct. That's the most proper and easiest path to correct the errors of Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton. The Supreme Court should correct the, de the wrong decision that it made. Now, one of the premises for overturning a Supreme Court is whether or not, even if they were wrongly decided, they've become generally accepted by society. Because the Supreme Court recognizes it makes mistakes. They reverse their own opinions many times a year. And one of the tests for it is, well, maybe we got it wrong, but people have come to generally accept it. No one says that the civil rights struggles should be reversed. No one wants to go back to slavery. But Roe and Doe have not been accepted by a uniform, deep, credible majority of the United States. We are deeply divided on the issue. Every nomination to the Supreme Court becomes an intense battle. If Roe, oh, excuse me, if the right to abortion were truly in the Constitution, as women's right to vote is in the Constitution, it could not be overturned by a opinion of the Supreme Court. And yet even the pro-choice side is deeply concerned that it will be overturned by five justices of the Supreme Court. That is all it took. But the right to vote was passed as an amendment to the Constitution. There's not going to be any judges who take away women's right to vote because it was properly passed by the people of the United States. Roe v. Wade was not. Every election cycle, including this past one, is a bitter, intense battle 
between one major party that says it's for death and one major party that says it's for life. And we saw a very narrow popular plurality to one side of that debate in the last election. But nothing has changed at the Supreme Court. The same members of the Supreme Court are there, and it's very possible all of them could live for another four years and so that President Obama will not get appointments to the Supreme Court. I believe this current court could and should reverse its own decision. In 1992, in Planned Parenthood v. Casey, the Supreme Court wrote, we're going to end this controversy for all time. We're going to come up with a compromise on the abortion issue, and we're going to call an undue burden standard, and we're going to kind of adopt a middle ground. We're not going to radically protect abortion like we did before 1992, giving it strict scrutiny, which almost no statute can withstand. No, we're going to say, well, yes, women can have abortions, but you can also have reasonable regulations on it if it doesn't create an undue burden. And the court thought that would end the controversy. This is 2012. It's a decade later. The 40th anniversary is coming on January 22nd, 2013, and the controversy is still here. Justice Scalia frequently cites the fact that <coughs> hundreds of thousands, perhaps a million people this year, will march against Roe v. Wade as evidence that it is not widely accepted by the American people. And the majority-minority position sometimes goes up and down depending on which side is having more success changing people's minds, but they have not accepted the Supreme Court's decision. So what should they do? All right, <clears throat> go back to Dred Scott. They created a civil war. And then the 13th, 14th, and 15th created rights for African Americans, equal rights under laws. These are human beings. We're going to give them equal rights. But because of popular will, the Jim Crow laws came up in the South, and in 1896, the Supreme Court bowed to popular opinion and said, okay, separate but equal is equal in Plessy versus Ferguson. They ignored the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. And so from 1896 to 1954, we lived with segregation, oppressive injustice. So what did the Supreme Court do in 1954? It didn't change the Constitution. It reversed Plessy versus Ferguson. It corrected its own error that allowed oppressive segregation to continue even though it had been massively relied upon in the South and other parts of our country. The Supreme Court finally corrected its own opinion to get equal rights for all human beings correct under the law. And it didn't need to change the Constitution, just reversed its one of, one of its own cases. That's what we believe the Supreme Court should do in the year 2013. There are a number of cases coming to the court that they could choose to do that in. There will always be abortion cases. As long as it is not widely and uniformly accepted by the American people, the Supreme Court has the right, the obligation, and the duty to correct the error that it made. And I believe the Constitution explicitly mentions right to life in the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendments, including the amendment that ended slavery or end, and gave equal rights to slaves, particularly the Thirteenth ended slavery, but the Fourteenth said we're going to treat these people as, as human beings with full rights as American citizens. So uh, the Supreme Court should uh, return the matter to the Constitution and the will of the American people, and that would then increase respect for the Supreme Court. Thank you.